Hey guys, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and today we're gonna make this cool little sunfish into a cool little sunfish. Let's paint something cool. Mm. We're gonna start out with white. Every base coat starts out with white. Okay, we have got white on here right now, which is a good base, which is over primer, which is over a little alcohol rub and a scuff. So we've done all of that. You guys probably already know how to do all that. And if any of you ever need a refresher on basics, on setup and prep and things like that, please let me know. Drop a comment down below in the description and I will be more than happy to do a refresher. But right now, we're gonna go what I normally do from light to dark. And on this sunfish, I want some greens in here and I want a little bit of maybe some lavender. They kind of have a hue to them. But I'm gonna do one thing before I do any of the light to dark, which I normally fit on these baits. And I'm gonna do black over top of the back and I'll show you why. I've got some black loaded in the cup and I'm just gonna come right across about the top third of the bait. I'm gonna go right across the back, hit the spine. Just run the length of this bait. Basically, I'm stopping right where the ear flap would be. I wanna get that good and dark. Don't forget the uh, the tail piece right here, guys. This little back piece, make sure that you don't just leave this white. A lot of times if you're shooting in dimensions, we forget that that's back here. So go ahead and drop that on as well. It overspray is fine. Uh, I was going to say something different, but it really, you can adopt this particular part of it to anything you want to do. You can use more or less depending on what kind of a look you want. Um, I run anywhere between a third and a half, but I try to stay above the ear flap here. The one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you get this good and dry before you put the next layer on, which I'm going to show you. Um, so take a hair dryer, whatever your air source is, and uh, heat set that or dry it and just make sure that it's completely dry to the touch. One of my favorite things lately to do, I'm having a lot of fun with these, with these metallics and just all kinds of cool stuff, but we're gonna lay some gold over the black and it makes it shine really, really well. So just enough to cover it. You don't wanna really thicken this. You wanna be able to, to see that. Hit the spine, come all the way down. And same with that little back piece. Now this is an interlocking. I think if I remember correctly, I got this from Timmy over at Crossroads Custom Tackle. Um, and shout out to Tim. I just wanted to say, I hope you're feeling better. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. I've got some goodies coming your way. This is one of the pieces that I'm doing for you. Um, but also there's a, there's a lot of really good reputable, I try not to just talk about one person there are some really good distributors here in the states um, if you guys are looking for quality blanks and tim is but one of them shane carrie all those guys um, just uh, get on facebook and look at custom lore business group and that's a great source for getting the things that you need here in the states for airbrushing for lures and well basically airbrushing in general i think now, before we get too far into this video, I wanted to also tell you how excited I am that we finally have instant technology available, at least to me, um, on my post-editing software uh, to where you guys are all seeing captions. I have made a decision to add captions to my video. Maybe you're in a situation where you are a member of the deaf community or hard of hearing or you need to keep the volume low because you have a child that's sleeping while you're watching my rattling videos i know they're so exciting um, 
but I'm really excited to be able to give you closed captions that I don't have to sit and type for in post-production because that's the hardest part is trying to type everything out. Um, YouTube does a halfway decent job of adding closed captions to a lot of videos, but this is a very type specific, picks up dialect, um, very good AI that is uh, giving me the ability to bring you every video from here on out in captions. So if you are a member of the deaf community, I would like to apologize for not being able to bring that to you prior to this. I know in the past, over the years, I've had several comments, hey, can you add some closed captions because either YouTube is getting it wrong or um, it's just I'm a little bit more in depth with the things that I'm saying where some words are being missed. So I hope that this helps. Um, and if you are not a member of that community, I hope that it also benefits you because it, you can stop the video and see exactly what I'm saying. You can copy down if I'm doing recipes or anything along those lines. Um, really, really, really happy. So hopefully you guys enjoy that aspect of this video and the ones to come as much as I do. But it's just super easy now and I'm glad that I can do it. The next layer that I'm going to be putting on is this opaque lilac from Createx Colors. I do work in enamels and I work in metallics and alcohol inks and things of that nature as well. But for basic patterns, I've found that water-based acrylics are still very, very good. They're effective, they're less expensive than most other things, especially if you're a hobbyist or you're just start starting out. If you guys are wondering what my pressure is, I'm right around 30. This doesn't have to be a super defined low level layer. Don't worry about getting the ear flap. It's going to be covered over eventually anyways. So I'm starting right about at the ear flap. And I'm working down into the belly and part of the gill plates here. And I probably got a little bit too much in my cup, so let me go rinse that out. Now to part of the belly portion here, I'm going to add in just a little bit of iridescent yellow. This is kind of what I call feathering. I'm just kind of going up and down and making about four points of contact. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And if you need to gauge where to put that in, if you guys are playing along and you wanna do exactly what I'm doing, um, just run it up by the joint lines. Make it real easy for you. And don't forget the back of your bait. I'm going to try and keep this over, but I have a feeling because there's some weight to this one, it might tip on me. Um, let's see if we can flip this around to where it's a little more stable. That might work. Hopefully you guys can see this all right. I think we're in frame. I can check that out for you guys real quick. To the next part of this, I'm going to add just a little bit of rust yellow. Now this is a color that I've mixed myself, but the easy way to remember a rust orange is brown just a medium color brown couple drops mixed in with some raw umber mixed in with some transparent orange and what you get is this darker color and that's really good for the throats on these sunfish and i'm going to bring that just behind this first eyelet here on the belly I'm going to bring it up into the gill plate a little bit on both sides of the bait. Nice light strokes or bursts. You don't want to splatter it, but you also don't want to run it all over the bait. And we might put just a little bit of that rust on the back. Try and get them even. I'm going to add a little bit of pearl black in here. Just a few drops. I'm gonna lower my pressure down to about 18. Now this is a fun little craft treat. It, that's exactly what it's called. This is the CTS 675. I grabbed it off of Amazon. 
and I've been having a lot of fun with this particular stencil. I'm just going to go in a randomized pattern. One thing I might want to try to do, actually lay this down. But you just want, you know how like it almost looks like little seeds have fallen on the bluegill. Um, they just have a few little black scales here and there. And this seems to be really good putting those in. I don't want to do the regular opaque black because that's too dark. Uh, I want to be able to come back and be able to see it, but not really go crazy and get too dark. So I just want a few here and there. It can be very random. Just come across whatever works best for you. Try and hit different spots on the belly. Maybe a little bit on this section here. Not quite a pumpkin seed pattern. I know what you guys are thinking, but along that line, you just want a little bit of definition that's colored out. I need to set this to where it's not going to fall over on me and then I will show you how it looks after I've finished spraying. I think that's probably good. Now you can come back, you can see that there is some straight lines on here. I'll also throw in just to kind of give the hint of a line here and there. over and do the same on the other side just three or four can probably get away with doing one per section make sure you don't backload this with a lot of paint not bad not bad hopefully you guys are having a good day it's good to see you I'm Trying to finish the year up with uh, a little bit more regularity in my spray session videos for you guys. I know I've kind of fallen off the wagon here, and I do apologize for that, but this year has been a whirlwind and really crazy, and uh, there you go. Now this, again, this is going to fade into the background once we get going here. This is, this is the base. We haven't done detail yet, um, and detailing is not going to be the, it's not this stuff. Detailing is just going to be layering on this particular paint job. The next layer I'm going to use, it's a pearlized white. Now pearl white is not opaque. Um, not even as dark or thick as fluorescence. What this is going to do, it's going to help drop everything into the background. Where you're still going to see your colors, they're going to fade out a little bit because I have never known a sunfish that has been as colorful as I try to paint them. So I'm taming it just a little bit just to get this pearl black to drop into the background and maybe mute a little bit of this orange rust on the belly. You can still see the colors. They're still there. They're still prevalent. They're just not quite as loud. Last thing you want is a loud bluegill. I'm going to come over the spine and part of the top here with some moss green and it's in a wicked it's it's in the original bottle and um, I've written moss green because I keep reusing the same small bottles I buy bigger bottles typically I buy 16 or 32 ounce bottles but they're just not as easy to manage so I dump everything back down into the original bottle only thing that you have to watch for on that is that you don't get clumps of paint after years. Just make sure the bottle's clean. So just at the same, about 18 PSI, I'm gonna come over the eye, come behind the ear flap, 
I'm just kind of making, I wouldn't say zigzags, but sort of. I still want to be able to see that gold underneath of it. So you don't want to get real dark on this. I'm kind of doing the same thing with this green that I did with the yellow on the bottom, if that makes any sense at all to you guys. Maybe a little bit darker towards the nose. A little bit darker on the forehead. But now we're starting to get that real pretty bluegill type look to it. Why do they call it bluegill if it's green and purple? Well, because of the finish. We're getting ready to lay that in now. Before we do the final steps on this, I have this stencil. Now, this particular bait has got really cool scale notches in it, but it doesn't have scale notches that are textured. What that means is that it's indented where the scales are, which gives it a really cool appearance, but unfortunately doesn't have anything that I can do anything else with other than lay down some little ends. Now, I want to try to line this up as best as I can. This is um, from Anarchy Model. This is Brian Best. And while no, I can't really see what's happening on this, I can give it a little bit of imagined texture just by throwing a little bit of white on the edge of these scales. Doesn't have to be an exact, just try to get it close. Flip it over and do the other side. Make sure you have your scales going the right way. The curved part is towards the back, always. Believe me, I've messed that up several times. Doesn't have to be all over the bait. You just wanna give it the hint of texture. Maybe just a couple more up there. I got some on the chest on that side. Let me see if I did on the, no, I didn't on the other side. Flip that back over and do just a little bit there. Now see on that one, I was able to get real close. And then maybe match up that other side by the forehead. So that this is what we have. Pretty cool little bait. Just to make some shine and give it its bluegill, this is some alcohol ink that's metallic, which means it's got some heavy mica in it. It's a really pretty color. Make sure it's spraying correctly. And I'm just gonna get in just on that bottom part of the gill plate. So I'm gonna extend the blue that I put on the lip, on the bottom lip, and run this blue just to the back of this gill plate. And just a little bit back here. And there you go, now we have a bluegill. I want to maintain this 18 PSI. I might even, you know what, I'm going to come down just a little bit more. Brought it down to 15. It's not spraying real heavy, but now I'm going to freehand. Let me pick this up off of the helping hands to do that. I'm going to pick this up and just very gently Add in the black to the ear flap.
if you're not good freehanding, it's okay. Make an indentation, let me show you what I mean, with a piece of paper. Just a regular old piece of paper. I'm trying to keep this in frame for you guys. And I can always come back over if my paint isn't completely dry, but it's pretty light. So lay down a piece of paper and take a thumbnail. If you don't have any other tools, you don't have any other stencils, just do that. I don't know how well the camera's picking that up, but then you can make a stencil out of just that. Lay it over your bait and do your ear flap that way. So a little helpful tip. Hopefully that'll work for some of you guys. But let me finish doing this. And that's a way you can freehand. I'm gonna grab some raw umber, some detail, wicked raw umber. Don't need much. And then just come over the spine. Just darken it up a little bit over this moss green. Gives it a little bit more of a transparent brown. And then before that dries, that raw umber on there. I'm going to come back with just a little bit more of this Liquitex and this is their metallic gold. Same thing that we shot before. And then just kind of dust over the top of that. I want that nice and shiny. I want that reflectivity as this thing is moving in the water. The more that you can portray a natural fish moving through the water, the better off you are, at least in my opinion. Are there times when the fish is just gonna bite because it's hungry? Yep. Because it's aggravated? Yep. Because you're in its spot? Yep. On the spawn? Yep. But then you're gonna have times when that bite just shuts down. When you don't have anything going on, you can't get a bite, you can't buy a bite. That's when you need to be super picky with the colors that you have and try and match as best you can whatever's moving around in the water, whether it's crappie, whether it's a shiner, whether it's a bluegill, anything along those lines, any edge that you can give yourself to get that bite generally will be more productive than if you haven't tried. Now I have a little white, just one dot. If you guys have watched me over the years, you know that I'm gonna use this just to set that edge on this ear flap. I'll lay the bait down like this. I just want to get a hint of this on here. Always reload. Don't get too much paint on your brush. And come back on the other side as best you can. Try and give yourself some stability. Put a finger or whatever you need to underneath that bait. And that is a cool little bluegill. Now you'll notice that there's some notches and some notches and tails not in this. It's because they're plastic and it comes with the bait. Let me see if I have that readily available. I do. Once you've clear coated this bait, super glue these things in or they will come out. This is not a bad bait. It swims okay. Um, it's, not, it's not small batch. This is, this is ABS plastic. Um, pretty good little swimmer for what it does. It's moderate to fast sink, but it doesn't blow out if you swim it a little faster than normal. It likes the medium retrieve better. I have put it in our test tank and it does fine. Um, Size is really good. One of the best things that I like about it is the size because I don't know if there's bank beaters out there, but when you're fishing worms or you're fishing stuff, there's a lot more of these small little guys than those mondos you see uh, everybody and their brother catch on YouTube. So this is the perfect size for a snack 
and it'll it'll draw some good attention and bites but super glue this stuff on uh, I think that they do sell replacements I'm not a hundred percent on that I'd have to get with Tim or Shane or Carrie or one of those guys but I do believe that they do replacement parts not sure I have to get back with me on that but that is my interpretation at least on the color scale of a cool little bluegill let's put some eyes on it got my super glue don't need a whole lot of super glue and with these you want to make sure that you have the uh, the eyes these are universal some are not these happen to be but make sure you have the directional there's a lateral line in these and it's more prominent on the front of the eye just make sure that you have both sides pointing in the same direction looks a little squirrely if you don't These take an eight millimeter eye. And one thing I didn't notice in this kit is if the eyes came with it and I didn't see it, doesn't mean that they're not there, but generally with blanks, they don't come with eyes, uh, unless you're getting like a bulk pack from Alibaba or AliExpress from overseas. Then a lot of times it'll come with like basic silver, gold, or red eyes. But these are fire, eight millimeter, comes in a 50 pack. And I'm going to pull the camera off the stand and give you the final reveal. And thanks for playing along with me today. I didn't really have a pattern or a reference photo for this. I kind of just wanted to go with it and see what I could come up with. So hopefully I've been able to do it a little bit of justice. But let's pull you guys off of the tripod and give you the reveal. Here's the final reveal. Got that beautiful gold sheen to it. A little bit of opaque lilac and lavender in the middle. Some nice shiny metallics on the gill plate. That beautiful throat. Overall, this is, this is a cool little size for a swim bait. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, I would love to see your interpretation of this. If you guys are playing along, let me know how you do and send me some pictures. Lots of ways you can get a hold of me. Um, Jen Crevasi or Jekyll Bait Co. You can get a hold of me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm not on TikTok. Um, everybody keeps telling me to get on TikTok, and then I see all kinds of weird stuff that happens, so I'm not sure where I stand on TikTok. Um, but for now, Twitter, at Jen Crevasi. You can email me, Jen Crevasi at JekyllBaits.com. Thank you. I hope you, I probably have like one more for you guys, probably going to be a shop update because I've got a bunch of stuff going on behind the, pay no attention to that Chick-fil-A box. No, this is not sponsored. Let me tell you something though, real quick. <laughs> when I have the ability to hire staff and painters, I want my business to run as efficiently as these guys. Because let me tell you what, they got hustle and game and they are efficient. Even if the line is wrapped around the building, you know you're not going to be there longer than like five minutes. So hats off to you guys, Chick-fil-A, um, stand-up organization. Love ya. Um, today I had the 12-piece nugget with Polynesian sauce. That was my lunch. Cheers. <laughs> happy casting, happy holidays. Merry Fishmas from Jekyll Bates. Thank you.